The story begins with a girl named Riaiko requesting a 5,000-year-old dragon named Ravandia to help her village defeat the demon lord, and in exchange, she offers her life, requesting the dragon to devour her. But the dragon is clueless and wonders why he would want to eat her. He is famous by the name of the evil dragon, however, he doesn't have any powers to fight anyone and remains scared all the time. Riaiko thinks that maybe the dragon doesn't like her, but he explains that it's not about his liking, but rather, he is an herbivore and doesn't eat meat. Riaiko keeps insisting, so she lies down and encourages him to eat her because she believes the dragon's powers are greater than the demon lord's. The dragon remembers that he's lived for 5,000 years without harming anyone and tells Riaiko to go home because her parents must be worried. She reveals her parents are dead, and the villagers sent her as an offering. With the constant denial from the dragon's side, Riaiko pulls out a knife and says she'll offer her soul if he doesn't eat her. The dragon senses magical power in her and thinks she could cause great trouble if he doesn't comply with her request. Suddenly, he hits upon an idea and starts pretending he has already eaten her soul since high-ranking dragons can do that without killing someone. Riaiko becomes happy and thinks she is his disciple now, and the dragon tells her to get on his back as he'll take her to the village. As he goes to the village, all the animals run away, which surprises him because he has never been a problem for anyone before. He hopes the villagers will welcome him warmly, but when he arrives, they are all scared and have weapons ready. Ravandia tries to stay calm and not show the villagers how scared he feels. He then explains that he has already eaten Riaiko's soul, warning the villagers not to send any more sacrifices. The dragon wants to ensure the girl is safe, so he tells the villagers to treat her well, and he will help them defeat the demon lord. Suddenly, a little boy named Riot throws a stone at the dragon, scaring him, and then he scolds the dragon for eating Riaiko's soul. Ravandia becomes scared of the little kid, but the villagers stop Riot. Riaiko also threatens him not to be rude to the evil dragon if he wants his life. Riot then reveals the truth, saying that his name was actually chosen for the sacrifice, but the villagers picked Riaiko instead. Riot tries to evoke a sense of honor in people that if they have to sacrifice an innocent girl to save themselves, their village doesn't deserve to survive. Meanwhile, some monsters called Dark Wolves attack the village, and they quickly surround the evil dragon, making him scared. He is confused about how to fight them but then steps forward. Fortunately, Riaiko jumps on the dragon's back, pulling out her knife and saying that she doesn't think the wolves are strong enough to be a challenge for the evil dragon. She uses her magical power to fight the wolves, and the dragon realizes that Riaiko isn't an ordinary wizard. She wipes out all the wolves with her deadly attacks, but she still thinks her power is only a small percentage of the dragon's powers. She thanks the dragon for lending her this power, who is still clueless what she is talking about. After defeating the dark wolves, the villagers throw a dance party for the evil dragon. The dragon then demands that Riot's father bring his son so he can talk with him, but he gets scared and begs Ravandia not to kill Riot. The dragon promises that he will only have a small talk with him, however, when Riot arrives, he starts blaming Ravandia for being scared of the demon lord. When Riaiko sees Riot misbehaving, she gets really angry and takes out her knife to kill him. But the dragon stops her and reminds them that they used to be close in the past. She tells him that they are not close, and Riot would often take her out of the village, giving her his clothes to hide. But every time she returned, Riot would get in big trouble and be punished severely. He kept trying to expel her from the village because he himself wanted to be offered to the evil dragon. She then puts on the clothes that have special eastern witchcraft powers and climbs onto the dragon's back, asking him to fly them to the demon lord so they can defeat him. Ravandia suddenly becomes nervous, remembering he doesn't know how to fly. Fortunately, Riaiko comes up with a new spell called Wings of Darkness, which allows the dragon to fly. Now, they are on their way to fight the demon lord. Ravandia, aware of his weakness, thinks of finding a way to calm Riaiko down so he might not have to fight the demon king and get embarrassed. He suggests that they should first find some fighters and create a team, and then they can attack the demon lord. Riaiko, who has blind trust in the dragon, accepts whatever he says and gets ready to act upon his plan. She suggests going to a nearby city, Paleodonaire, where they can gather a team. She then bombards Ravandia with unnecessary information about the city. When they reach there, Ravandia is shocked to see the city on fire and under attack by monsters. He tells Riaiko that she didn't inform him about the city being attacked and told unnecessary information to which she claims that these monsters can be defeated easily. The monsters try to attack Ravandia, and the soldiers also consider him a threat, so they also shoot arrows at him. 
However, Ryaiko uses her power to destroy all the bird monsters and arrows, and Ravandia lands before the soldiers. They recognize him as the Dragon Lord Ravandia, the only dragon who can be a great rival to Demon Lord. Ryaiko expresses her anger at the soldiers for attacking Ravandia, but just then, the leader of Paleodonair, General Arian, shows up and asks for Ravandia and Ryaiko's help to save the city against monsters. She tells Ryaiko that being Ravandia's disciple, Ryaiko has surpassed her powers, but Ryaiko turns down her request. The dragon orders Ryaiko to assist Ariant in dealing with the flying monsters and help save this city. Ariant informs them that initially, only bird monsters attacked their city, but now they have turned into skeleton monsters, and there are too many of them. Ryaiko uses her powers to grow wings on her back and starts defeating the monsters. The dragon advises the general that there's probably a leader controlling these monsters from a high place. The general agrees and orders her soldiers to find the leader of the skeleton monsters. Later, Ryaiko returns and happily informs Ravandia that she has killed all the monsters, but the dragon tells her to rest for a while. She initially refuses but eventually agrees. The dragon looks at Ariant and thinks of her as an understanding person who can comprehend his truth. As Ryaiko sleeps with Ravandia, it starts raining, and then she encounters a nightmare calling her dad. The dragon uses his wings to shelter Ryaiko, and she sleeps without any worries. Later, Ariant returns and appreciates the dragon's suggestion, which helped them win the battle. She then tells her soldiers to finish their tasks and move from there. All the soldiers leave, and now Ravandia and the general have a conversation. The dragon decides to tell the truth to the general that he is an evil. He begins by informing Ariant that Ryaiko's powers are her own and it's not him who provided them to her. He suggests to Ariant that Ryaiko should stay in the town, get training, and become a great wizard. But Ariant doesn't believe Ryaiko's powers are hers. She blames Ravandia for being a part of the Demon Lord's army, and she asks him why he is going against the Demon Lord. To this, Ravandia explains that he's not a part of the Demon King's army, and that he's just a vegetarian dragon who isn't very strong. Arian still says that Ryaiko's powers are provided by the dragon, as no one can be born with such divine powers. She has never seen a divine child, but Ravandia tells her that Ryaiko might be a divine child with blessed powers. In response, Arian informs him that Ryaiko's powers are a bit too strong to handle, and these powers can even turn her into a demon if she doesn't figure out how to control them. So indeed, these extreme powers come from a dragon. This scares the dragon, and Arian asks again why he's betraying the demon lord. Getting no response, she draws her sword and introduces herself as a loyal swordsman to the Demon Lord. After that, she attacks Ravandia for opposing his majesty, but Ryaiko wakes up and joins the fight. However, she spent all her energy on defeating the bird and skeleton monsters earlier, so she can't keep up with Ariant, who is skilled in using swords. Ariant blocks all of Ryaiko's attacks and then swings her sword at Ryaiko, who manages to dodge by jumping away. However, Ariant follows her into the air and strikes her, making Ryaiko fall to the ground, losing consciousness. Ariant continues her battle with the evil dragon, attacking him with her sword. The dragon cries out in pain, but he soon realizes that her attacks aren't causing physical harm. Ariant then reveals her special sword, which doesn't cut but still inflicts damage on the target. She keeps attacking the dragon, and after some time, he lies on the ground, completely exhausted and defeated. Ariant then shares the truth with the dragon, telling him she was just testing to see if he was telling the truth earlier about his weaknesses and Ryaiko's powers. She admits that she's not a part of Demon Lord's army, and Ravandia feels relieved but also angry about the mental torture he endured during the fight. Ariant suggests that he should keep a secret that he's not very strong because if the world finds out, they might come after him, as there will be a huge bounty on his head. She also advises him to explain the entire fight as a dream to Ryaiko, as she blindly believes in him, and if she loses this trust, it will be troublesome to everyone. The next morning, when Ryaiko wakes up, she is surprised to see the dragon has shrunk in size. Last night, Ariant gave Ravandia rejuvenating water to make him a more suitable size, and when Ryaiko asks the dragon about his shrunken size, he makes up a lie that he is too tall, which makes him bend down to talk to anyone. This causes pain in his neck, so he has shrunk, and as expected, Ryaiko believes whatever he says. They both then leave the city and continue their journey in a forest. As they walk, Ryaiko is still puzzled that whatever happened last night between her and Ariant was a dream as it looked so realistic. However, Ravandia makes her believe that Ariant is a kind lady who even gave them weapons. Meanwhile, Ryad arrives at Paleodonair and starts searching for Ravandia in pursuit of Ryaiko. Just as a huge piece of rock is about to fall on him, Ariant arrives and saves him. 
he overhears some other soldiers saying that Ariant also fought with the evil dragon, and he is impressed with her skills. Consequently, he asks her to become his master and train him so he can fight Ravandia. Ariant agrees to train him, but her training proves to be very challenging for Riot. Riot finds it incredibly tough and almost feels like he's losing his mind while trying to keep up with it. On the other hand, Ravandia and Riaiko walk in the forest, and Ravandia gets tired, so he suggests taking some rest. As they rest under a tree, a group of bandits discovers them and tries to attack. The bandits plan to sell Riaiko for a high price, and discovering that the dragon can actually speak human language, they get excited, thinking that this could make them very rich. Riaiko asks the dragon for permission to kill the bandits, but he refuses, saying that killing should be avoided whenever possible. The bandits then try to threaten Riaiko, but this time, the dragon gives her permission to use a tiny bit of her power. Riaiko touches one of the bandits slightly, and he is pushed back a distance away. Frightened, the other bandits surrender and take Riaiko and the dragon to their cave, where they have many people held captive. After reaching the cave, all the prisoners are set free, and Ravandia sends Riaiko to take the bandits to the nearby prison so they can turn themselves in. The bandits get scared of Riaiko telling Ravandia that they will surrender themselves on their own, but because Ravandia wants some alone time, he still sends Riaiko with them. Once Riaiko leaves, the dragon becomes happy and enters a strange cave, searching for food. However, while in the cave, he accidentally falls into a tunnel where he encounters a scary creature. The ghost slowly unveils itself, frightening the dragon, and he calls for Riaiko to help him. The ghost attempts to get closer to the dragon, but the dragon panics and runs away. The ghost advises him not to run because there are traps in the area. However, the dragon doesn't listen and continues running until he accidentally triggers a trap that shoots arrows at him. Fortunately, he survives the trap, and the ghost approaches him, telling him not to run because there are even more traps nearby. Strangely, the ghost provides Ravandia with food and asks about a strange power he sensed earlier above ground. Ravandia tells him it must be coming from a human pointing towards Riaiko, but the ghost mentions that it doesn't seem human. The dragon expresses his curiosity about the ghost's identity, so the ghost shows him some wall drawings. It turns out that the ghost is actually the god of hunting, and many years ago, he came down to this land to teach humans how to hunt and provide for themselves. However, as time passed and people became skilled at hunting, they forgot about him. Now, the god of hunting wants to leave the underground and continue teaching people how to hunt, but there is no one left for him to teach. Ravandia feels sorry for the god of hunting and decides to become his student, making him excited. They both get outside the tunnel, and the god of hunting excitedly tells Ravandia that he can turn the dragon into an excellent hunter in just three hours. Ravandia reveals that many people have tried to teach him various things in the past, but he has always been a poor student. In response, the god of hunting reassures him, saying there's no such thing as a bad disciple, there are only bad masters. The training begins, and the first part involves physical exercises in which the god of hunting instructs the dragon to do 200 sit-ups. However, when the dragon tries to do it, he can't even touch the ground because of his spikes on the back. This disappoints the teacher, but he begins the next part of the training, which involves balancing, and Ravandia is tasked with walking across a log to reach the other side. However, the log is designed for humans, and when the dragon attempts to walk on it, he informs the god of hunting that he might fall. The master forces Ravandia to walk anyway, and as expected, the log breaks, causing him to fall. Throughout the training, Ravandia struggles with a number of challenges and despite his efforts, he cannot succeed in any of the exercises, making the god of hunting whine in disbelief that his techniques cannot be full of flaws. Finally, the god of hunting decides to use a special technique, and he sets up explosives on strings as obstacles, and the dragon has to cross the strings without touching them. While he does this, the effects of the rejuvenating water that kept him smaller begin vanishing, causing him to grow back to his original size. The bombs explode, and the training ends in failure once again. The god of hunting cries because it's the first time he has failed at training someone to hunt. Eight hours have passed, and he thought his students would easily graduate in three hours, but he still doesn't give up. He doesn't accept that he can't impart any knowledge to a student, so he asks the dragon to extend his claws and then grants him some dark magical powers. He tells Ravandia not to mention his teacher to others in the future and then disappears. The dragon, feeling exhausted, lays down and falls asleep. When he wakes up in the morning, he is delighted to see Riaiko in front of him. He becomes happy, telling Riaiko that he would never let her go away, but then Riaiko informs him about a city called Selianen that she came across while returning. 
the city is only protected by a moat, so before the Demon King's army invades it, she suggests that Ravandia should capture that city and become its ruler. However, the dragon declines her suggestion instantly, but then she climbs on him, asking Ravandia to head to the city. As they try to enter Selianen, a magical barrier controlled by the Water Saint blocks their path. The Water Saint recognizes Ravandia as the evil dragon and warns him not to enter the city. But the dragon keeps insisting that he is not evil, and suddenly, he hears the water saint screaming. It turns out that Riaiko combines her magic with the water and captures the water saint, making her scared. The water saint thinks it is Ravandia who is doing this to her. Riaiko and Ravandia enter the city because with the water saint gone, the barrier is open, and any outside monster can invade it. Inside the city, the dragon decides to disguise himself as a circus dragon, a suggestion that Riaiko initially rejects because it will embarrass Ravandia's honor, but eventually agrees to when the dragon insists. The people in the city become comfortable with them as Riaiko introduces Ravandia as the circus dragon she owns. As Riaiko and Ravandia explore the city, someone informs them about the history of Selianen. The city was once a desert until the water saint arrived and provided water and fertile land, allowing people to settle and live there. They both eventually get a room in a hotel, and Ravandia thinks it's a blessing to stay in this city as he doesn't have to find the demon lord. He then thinks that water saint must think evil of him, so he must clear the misconception that it wasn't him who attacked her. He tells Riaiko to stay in the room while he finds the water saint. On the other hand, the water saint hides, fearing the dragon, but he manages to locate her each time. Ravandia actually searches for water to quench his thirst, but the water saint, who hides as water, thinks the dragon will attack her. After a lengthy game of hide and seek, Ravandia takes a break. During his rest, some children approach him and offer him an apple. The water saint sees this and assumes the dragon intends to harm the children. She instantly emerges from the disguise and challenges Ravandia to a one-on-one -on -one fight rather than hurting children. She then sends the kids to their homes, and Ravandia reveals that he just wants to return to his hotel. She becomes shocked hearing this but then agrees to take the dragon to his hotel. As they talk, the water saint lies, concealing her identity by claiming not to be the saint but an ordinary girl. The dragon easily sees through her disguise and then asks her to convey a message to the water saint, requesting her to reinstate the barrier to avoid the entrance of other monsters. The water saint brings the dragon back to his hotel and asks him to leave the city early in the morning. The dragon thanks her because he might have lost his way alone. When he enters his room, Riaiko reveals to Ravandia that the water saint is actually a demon who can control water and mud. But the dragon informs her that the water saint is still not evil. They both prepare to sleep, with Ravandia opting to sleep on the floor since the human bed is unsuitable. Surprisingly, Riaiko also decides to sleep on the floor with him as she can't sleep at a place at a higher level than her master. During the night, a brightly armored dragon named Silver Dragon, the right hand of the Demon Lord, is spotted in the sky, planning to attack the city. Besides him is the Demon Lord, who possesses others, turning them evil to fulfill their desires. In the morning, the Water Saint disguises herself as a service girl and enters Riaiko and Ravandia's room. Riaiko, however, knocks her down to the floor, causing some of her water to splash. The Water Saint then serves them the food she brought, which turns out to be discarded leftovers from children's vegetables found in the garbage. This angers Riaiko, and she strikes down the tray, wasting all the food. The Water Saint runs away. But the dragon is now upset with Riaiko for wasting food. He tries to discipline her, telling her to use her powers only when he commands or for self-defense. The dragon then suggests to Riaiko that she should play with the children in the city. Initially hesitant, Riaiko eventually agrees to play with them. Meanwhile, the dragon goes outside to talk to the water saint and clear up the misunderstanding. Riaiko leaves to play with the children, and as the dragon steps out of his room, he suddenly begins to drown in the water surrounding him. The water saint takes him deep into the water, intending to finish him. In doing so, she doesn't care about her life as she will ultimately sacrifice herself. While Riaiko is with the other children, they search for Ravandia, who played with them yesterday. But Riaiko doesn't know which dragon they are talking about. She thinks like her majesty, the evil dragon, there must be some pet dragons who play with children. At the same time, the silver dragon launches an attack on the city, and Riaiko, thinking that this is the dragon who plays with the children, prepares to have some fun with him. Meanwhile, Ravandia is trapped deep underwater with the water saint, unable to communicate because he cannot talk underwater. 
Ryaiko approaches the silver dragon and asks him to play a game. But the dragon, uninterested, orders her to leave. However, Ryaiko persists, grabbing onto the dragon's tail, and the citizens are astonished by the young girl's audacity. This angers the dragon, who accepts the challenge to play with Ryaiko because he is bound to fulfill the challenge as he is a member of the Demon Lord Army. To teach her a lesson and warn the humans not to underestimate dragons, he tries attacking Ryaiko. However, Ryaiko treats the dragon like a ball and starts playing with him by throwing him in different directions. After that, she complains that the dragon isn't bouncy enough. This infuriates the dragon, causing him to become charged with electricity, ready to unleash a lightning attack, and people start fleeing to save themselves. The Water Saint struggles to fight with Ravandia because he keeps surviving her attacks. It turns out that the God of Hunting is assisting Ravandia in this battle, and the Water Saint accuses him of cheating. The dragon asks the water saint if she is a demon, and hearing this, the water saint becomes emotional. She says that all she did was to save the Selianan city and doesn't want to join the demon lord's army. She thinks Ravandia is here to take her back to the army, so she attacks him again. But this time, she gathers all the water from the city, multiplying her force to capture Ravandia inside her world. As she does it, she sucks rejuvenating water from the dragon's body, growing his size, and her own bubble holding Ravandia explodes, making them enter the real world. The water saint starts crying, saying she can't protect her city from a dragon, but Ravandia assures her that he has no evil intentions toward her city. He comforts her by saying that she has been putting much effort into protecting the city, so there's no need to worry. This gives some hope to the saint, and Ravandia suggests she not waste water as people in the city have their lives dependent on it. He then turns his attention to Ryaiko, hoping she hasn't caused further trouble. Meanwhile, the water saint experiences some unusual sensations when a death locust, sent by the demon lord, sits on her head, possessing her. The dragon notices the locust on her head and inquires about her well-being. But the saint remains unresponsive. Suddenly, strange things start happening to the water saint, and Ravandia inquires again if she is fine, to which she responds by covering her ears as if she's trying to protect herself from something. In her mind, the demon lord encourages her to stop hiding her true self and reveal her evil and demonic personality to the world. As a result, her eyes turn red, and she raises her hand to perform magic, causing the floor to break and the water pipes to burst. Ravandia warns her about the terrible consequences her actions could have for the entire town. Onlookers are shocked by her sudden transformation, and the saint creates a huge bowl of mud, throwing it all over the city to bury them all alive. To her surprise, the people become happy having been blessed with some fertile soil, thinking of it as a present from the water saint. They start playing with it, making soil balls and throwing them joyfully at each other. The saint is confused because her attempts to scare them only bring happiness and unity. This infuriates her, and she prepares to attack again, but Ravandia yells for Ryaiko's help. Ryaiko arrives in the blink of an eye, passing through the giant mud ball created by the water saint, leaving her astonished. Ryaiko informs Ravandia where she was and what she was doing with the silver dragon, but the dragon turns his attention back to the saint who is still crying because she isn't able to scare human beings despite her immense powers. Ravandia asks her to tell him if anything is troubling her, to which she reveals that when she first joined the Demon Lord's army, she had hoped to learn from the other members, but they bullied her, calling her incompetent. All those initial experiences deeply impacted her, making her feel rejected and weak. One day, she was walking through a desert, where she encountered poor people struggling to survive. She planned to scare them by showcasing her powers, however, her attempts backfired. Instead of fear, her powers brought water to the thirsty people of the desert and turned barren land into fertile soil, saving lives. The people praised her and begged her to stay, eventually building a city in her honor called Selianan. They worshipped her as a kind deity, unaware of her true nature as a demon. Over time, she had forgotten her demonic identity because the love and worship of the people brought her extreme joy. Now, she thinks she doesn't deserve any praise because she is a demon in her true form. Suddenly, a young girl approaches the saint and asks why she's upset, not knowing she is the saint. The girl reassures her that the water saint has brought them happiness by providing soil, and invites her to join their celebrations. She then leaves after saying goodbye, but the saint mistakes the girl's words into believing she was mocking her. This realization brings her to tears again, and the dragon comforts her. He tells her that it's not the past that decides someone's true nature, but the present. In response to his comforting gestures, the saint's eyes return to their normal blue color. Inside the saint, the demon lord can't find her evil side anymore which disappoints him. 
The demon lord observes the dragon and Riaiko's actions, thinking Ravandia must be the strongest creature. As Ravandia pats the saint's head, the demon lord enters his body, and Ravandia feels something strange. Inside, the demon lord starts searching for a past trauma or any evil desire or deed to possess him. Ravandia starts hearing voices in his mind that tell him to reveal his evil side and fulfill his desire. But the dragon is clueless about how to respond to these voices. Riaiko then expresses that they shouldn't be staying here because the people of this town worship an incompetent demon, so it's not worthy of Ravandia's reign. Ravandia also orders Riaiko to leave the town because they can't create more trouble for its citizens. As they leave, the water saint stops them and asks them to be a part of the village festival that will be held to worship her. Children will also be waiting for them, so she doesn't want to make them sad. Hearing this, Riaiko becomes angry, but Ravandia instantly agrees to stay. The water saint also invites them to the feast held at night, and then she leaves. Inside Ravandia, the demon lord is struggling to find his evil side, which is very well hidden. Later, a member of the Adventure Guild meets an old man, asking him if there was any strange phenomenon that occurred in the city as many of the buildings have broken and the road was also being repaired. However, the man reveals it was just because of a girl playing with a dragon. The guild member is shocked to learn about the existence of a friendly dragon, and then the man shows him the silver dragon whom he was talking about earlier. Strangely, the silver dragon is going through an identity crisis. One moment, he acts like an evil dragon who wants to destroy humanity, and the very next second, he wants humans to play with him. In Paleo Denaire, Riot is busy getting training from Ariant. Ariant then comes across the news that a demon dragon has been found in Selianan City, and Riot thinks it must be Ravandia. Hence, he instantly wants to go there and save Riaiko from him, but Ariant tells him that it's fake news. Besides, he can't just leave in the middle of his training. Riot begins training again, and Ariant finds something skeptical, so she decides to visit the city herself. Later at night, during the feast, Riaiko and Ravandia walk around the decorated streets and pass through a food market. They are both hungry, and Riaiko leaves to find something to eat. Ravandia becomes happy finding some time alone and getting to eat what he wants, and just then, he sees some sheep grazing grass. But when he reaches there, he discovers they have finished all the food. The little girl feeding the sheep offers grass to the dragon, and he starts eating it. As Riaiko passes by, Ravandia pretends to be a sheep so Riaiko's image of him being extra strong doesn't shatter. However, the sheep finished this batch of grass too, making Ravandia wish he could have eaten all the grass. The demon lord, inside, finally finds something to infuriate and push Ravandia to remember his darkest deed. Ravandia reveals that his darkest deed was stealing all the fruits from a tree and leaving nothing for others. He then becomes determined to fight with the sheep to retrieve all the grass, but because he is too incompetent, he gets defeated by the sheep, disappointing the demon lord. After getting defeated, Ravandia returns to his senses, and the girl apologizes for her sheep, leaving nothing for him. She asks him to go to a great field where he can enjoy grass with the silver dragon. She takes him to the Silver Dragon, who still suffers from an identity crisis. The little girl tells Ravandia that after playing with Riaiko, Silver Dragon has been acting strangely and saying odd things. She thinks that Ravandia might be friends with Silver Dragon, and he confirms that Silver Dragon belongs to the same circus where he performs. Ravandia then sends the little girl away and decides to talk to the Silver Dragon about his conflict with Riaiko and that he will bring her to apologize. But the Silver Dragon gets angry and wants to take revenge. The Silver Dragon is about to attack him, but then his good side overcomes his actions, and he reveals that he only wants to play. Ravandia touches the Silver Dragon, transferring the Demon Lord's shadow into his body, who manipulates his thoughts and turns him into a monster fueled by extreme rage. The Silver Dragon's eyes turn red, and he claims to be the ruler of the sky, and wind. Scared, Ravandia calls for Riaiko's help, who arrives in the blink of an eye, and a battle ensues between them, with Riaiko skillfully dodging the Silver Dragon's attacks. The Silver Dragon becomes exhausted, and the Demon Lord inside him tries to control him again. Riaiko fights back and eventually defeats the dragon, however, now the Demon Lord enters her body to turn her evil. Strangely, the dark side of Riaiko is even stronger than her good side because of her past trauma, which involved her father's death. 
Because of extreme anger, she sucks all the powers inside her body, shocking the demon lord. Eventually, Ryaiko starts turning into a demon who is in control of her powers. Ryaiko causes havoc in the city, shocking Ravandia, and then Ariant and the Water Saint also arrive, seeing the mess. Ariant informs Ravandia that what she feared has become a reality as she always felt Ryaiko didn't know how to control her powers, and now she is turning into a demon. The city's inhabitants become terrified seeing her, and then she throws a massive stone at them, trying to kill them. Ariant saves them and informs the Water Saint that she is Ryaiko's first target, as she has been protecting humans instead of attacking them. The citizens think the Water Saint will protect them, but she herself is crying in fear. Ravandia has hopes for Ariant that she might be able to defeat Ryaiko's evil side, but she also starts running away in fear. Ravandia, the Water Saint, and Ariant run away, but suddenly, Ravandia stops for Ryaiko. Everyone tries to convince the dragon to leave but he can't take his eyes off Ryaiko, who is in pain. He remembers the times Ryaiko saved him, so he decides not to leave her when she is in trouble. But Ryaiko is so powerful that none of them can defeat her even if they combine forces. Ariant comes up with a plan, and she holds the dragon's tail, using him as a shield against Ryaiko's attacks. It turns out that Ravandia is unaffected by Ryaiko's attacks because she still believes the dragon is her master even in control of her powers. Arian decides to use Ravandia as a weapon to awaken her humanity, and despite his disagreement with the plan, she throws him towards Ryaiko. Ryaiko uses a laser-like attack against Ravandia, and it throws Ravandia on the ground. However, the saint creates a water bubble around him for his safe landing. Arian then says sacrificing the water saint might be enough for Ryaiko to overcome her demonic powers. Hearing this, the saint is on the verge of fainting because she doesn't want to die. Meanwhile, Ryaiko's transformation into a complete demon begins slowly with her body changing. And if it continues like this, they won't be able to bring her back. The dragon notices a red ribbon falling from her, catches it, and decides to pass through Ryaiko's body to awaken her. For this, he asks the water saint to extract all the rejuvenating water from his body, which makes him grow in size, and then he takes the silver dragon's wings to fly. With the help of Ariant, the water saint, and the silver dragon's wings, Ravandia goes in the air, passing through Ryaiko's body and awakening her. He also ties the red ribbon on her head given by her dad. When Ryaiko's dad gave her the ribbon, he told her that one day she would meet someone kind. Finally, Ryaiko wakes up, and her demonic powers are gone. She thanks the dragon for tying the ribbon on her head, and then Ravandia tells Ryaiko that they've caused quite a mess and must apologize for it. However, the Water Saint informs them that they still have to join the festival as the people of Selianen are optimistic and believe in moving on. The dragon is amazed by how humans calmly face difficult situations, and he instructs Ryaiko to enjoy the festival. She agrees to do so, as she deeply respects him but also reveals her plans for Ravandia to announce his authority over the city after the festival. The story ends with Ravandia contemplating how he can never get rid of the title of evil attached to his name.